do something together or we can start and uh, I will, I will just uh, have a brief introduction. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, to you Professor uh, Elena Teodoro Puloko. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Professor Teodoro uh, Puloko. Uh, is a philosophy of uh, education uh, with emphasis on practical philosophy at the University of, uh, Age, uh, of the Aging. Yeah. Uh, uh, sh she has studied philosophy in Greece and France, uh, in Greece uh, National and uh, Kapodistrian University of Athens, and U University of Francois Rabelais, too. Uh, Anne Descartes, what year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she has been uh, visiting or invited a uh, professor to uh, many, uh, many places, um, European and uh, beyond Europe, uh, Europe and beyond Europe. Uh, for example, like uh, University of uh, Paris 8, uh, once on Saint Denis. Uh, University uh, de Rouen uh, Laboratoire, um, and uh, and uh, invited professor at the univers uh, University of uh, Porto uh, in Porto, Portugal, uh, and also uh, University Catholic de uh, the West uh, University. Uh, to uh, Estado to uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, and also uh, in Mexico and Haifa, Israel. Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, so she had been uh, visiting or, uh, or uh, invited to uh, many common uh, of, uh, of the world. Um, I got a very thick, uh, thick uh, CV, but uh, I will not uh, go uh, oh. deeper. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so uh, today uh, we will have a, a talk from uh, uh, from her. Uh, the subject is uh, another way of making philosophy the, uh, the example of the philosophical object and of the soma body. Uh, well, it's. Uh, uh, I thought I I have some idea on on this, but uh, probably uh, not actually. Uh, uh, no, uh, probably I can think of a philosophical object, but uh, but uh, what uh, what does uh, soma body refers to? Uh, we have to wait uh, for the for the talk. So uh, so let's welcome her. Uh, <laughs> you see that it's not only you that you have difficulties with languages. Uh, I'm very pleased and honored to receive your invitation. Here is my first time in Asia, of course, my first time in Taiwan, and I'm very, very profoundly happy for this. And um, um, it's about the, the, the theme of my topic of uh, my speech here uh, is uh, something that uh, Professor Alain Rosa uh, has uh, chosen uh, among the different topics and uh, this, this topic here is particular because it presents um, two, uh, two projects that, is, that through these projects I have found it in fact the Laboratory of Practical Philosophy uh, in Rhodes because it's in uh, a whole idea about what I am uh, I'm thinking about, but it is practical philosophy. And uh, these, these are two projects very peculiar and, and difficult to, to, to describe because uh, they are also experimental and in an experimental level. And two, both of them has the, has the characteristic that they uh, they uh, engage uh, art, 
uh, um, in, in many sense, in many arts, many different arts, without being an, a project, an art project, of course. And the problem is that uh, in, uh, in engaging art, uh, we must, I must remain focused to the philosophical uh, aspect of this project. And so we have the first difficulty with, for, philo for practical philosophy. In what sense philosophy can be practical, uh, 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 remain in philosophy as is obliged as practical philosophy to, to have a discourse, to have a to have a relation with something which is not philosophy, like Deleuze he said that it's the time for philosophy to explore non-philosophies, the, the area of non-philosophy. I think that the, the basis of practical philosophy today, in these days, is this possibility of philosophy to have a uh, discourse, a relation uh, with what is not philosophy. And uh, what is not philosophy is not only um, the, the, the different subjects or different disciplines which not, who are not philosophy, but also in in the in human in the human reality, which uh, that it is not philosophy, it's our body. Uh, I mean that philosophy very uh, West, Western philosophy. I must be clear with that. I don't have uh, speciality to um, to non-Western philosophy, but I have readings also of, of non-Western philosophy. And I know very well that this problem is a problem of Western philosophy, which, which is uh, not to understand the body as a part of doing philosophy. When we said, in, uh, for example, when we said that we do philosophy with children, which is uh, something very new but very known also in uh, Western universities and Western education, we speak about uh, doing philosophy through the language, through discourse, through the dialogue. We don't think about doing philosophy with other parts of the human body. And, uh, we, and they, they, we do philosophy through art. Uh, that means that we use art in order to do philosophy, but without art. Uh, so my main problem is how we can do philosophy, and so practical philosophy, uh, not by by using the other the other disciplines or the, the other materials or the human body in order to speak about other disciplines, philosophically or body, but the, the problem and is a very difficult and complex problem, and theoretically and practically, is how we can maintain. Philosophical, philosophical thing, philosophical being, uh, by by maintaining the difference of the other with with which we converse, who we we are collaborating for doing philosophy, and uh, these two projects exactly is make the, the effort to understand this. The philosophical objects, by by constructing objects, not material always, but objects, even if the object is a sound or, or a synthesis of sound or a discourse or anything that could be the the, the result of a long procedure, and uh, some about it because we understand uh, we we try to understand how we can perform with the body by maintaining also the, the, the philosophical concept. And in the first place, uh, philosophical objects, it's more, more, more uh, how to say, ready to understand paintings, painting or theater or uh, film uh, and other arts, but body, uh, but body, uh, soma body is more related to dance and performance and to into the voice also and uh, so i because i didn't i didn't uh, know very well the context of our um, of our meeting here um, i i 
but I don't know if I prefer well, I, I think well, I prefer to present you uh, the, the theoretical context or some, some general lines of the theoretical uh, context on which uh, I have based these two projects and at the end some uh, a few lines for each project and uh, then perhaps I, if we have the time I will project you some to some two or one or two things uh, of these two of these two projects and uh, I must be um, ask you for uh, Clemens, because my English are not uh, are not uh, so good as my friends and very good as my Greek, uh, <laughs> and uh, so uh, another way of making philosophy. That's the the, the question I was uh, speaking about uh, in my foreword, and um, I I I have um. I have a statement of uh, related by Henri Lefebvre, a French uh, philosopher that I, I love. I love very much, and it was a reference uh, taken from uh, from uh, Nietzsche, and uh, he says, when Nietzsche declares the depth of pain in the world, the joy more profound than the pain is a strong word more strong than the demonstration of philosophers. This is an act, not a concept. This act contributes to the correction of the world, of life, and his interlocutor says to Nietzsche, do you reject the concept? Of course not, says Nietzsche. I am trying to situate it by indicating its limits. And uh, I think that in, uh, in the in the teaching of philosophy, the problem of philosophers is that they are or afraid or indifferent, if this is not a, their theory, about the limits of the concept. I don't say the problem of philosophers, I say the problem of teaching philosophy. They, they have the, the, the idea that the concept, which is the main tool of philosophy, it's without without defeat, it's undefeatable, and without limits, we can do anything with concepts. I think that I, 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 I defend the same thing, because I am doing the and I'm teaching philosophy, but I think that there is a limit of the concept. And this is the, the problem of practical philosophy, because practical philosophy must understand its limits in order to be, to, to be, to, to, to be, how to say, in, I do philosophy to be, to be done, in order to be done with the others. So, um, on the other hand, we have a laboratory of practical philosophy, and what this means, a laboratory, here I am, I am trying to, uh, to work on, uh, on the idea of Latour, of Bruno Latour, about the the life and the action of a laboratory. The laboratory itself, in my opinion, it's a project of practical philosophy. It's not, it's not a laboratory where philosophers speak about their philosophy. It's a laboratory that is, it makes the effort to understand what is practical philosophy. So it's part of the project itself. So Bruno Latour says, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. So the laboratory is a, a place to stand. And uh, Latour uh, takes the, the, um, the, the example of uh, Pasteur, Louis Pasteur, who had the problem to make the people understand what he's doing. Like philosophers have problem to, uh, to make people understand what they are doing. And in fact, they have laboratories close to, to, to themselves I speak scientifically, and they don't, they don't want to, to have relations to the other, they don't understand philosophy. So uh, Latour proposes three steps, three movements. Move one, uh, it's, not in, in my, it's not in my text, it's a little reduction. Capturing others' interest, so it's the first thing, in capturing the interest of other indifferent groups, 
uh, and uh, so it's the main, the, the first interest for uh, for uh, you see, I cannot, I cannot work without uh, movement two, moving the leverage point from a weak to strong position. So you you start to to, to find what is the strong position to work in the in the laboratory, and. Um, so uh, Pasteur, for example, uh, move out from the farm where he he made his experiments to a laboratory in the in the in the faculty of university. In my opinion, the the strong position of a laboratory of practical philosophy is uh, is remove uh, the remove the place of of the university laboratory to other places through projects which are related with other perspectives. And third movement, moving. Oh my God! Oh my God! Um, ah, what? Ah, I found it. Excuse me, because I have my problems with technology, as you have understand. And third movement, moving the world with this level. Moving the world means that we must link the microcosmos, microcosmos of the of each laboratory, of the laboratory with the macrocosmos of out outside of the laboratory so you must have a very strong and conscious relation between the inside which is the laboratory with the outside which is the the other world and so a uh, definition of practical philosophy in my opinion it's this kind of uh, preparing this relation between the inside of philosophy with this the outside of philosophy uh, for describing the for entering now the to the text and uh, to my theoretical frame for all of this, I have chosen uh, three three main points. One point is that um, I believe and we believe that uh, philosophy is not a theory and of course it's not a practice. And uh, for this I have chosen to work especially through uh, Lefebvre uh, because Lefebvre have has spoken about the theoretical practice, which in his mind is must be philosophy. Of course, the favorite is more political thinker than I am. I, I am not doing political philosophy like the Fabre does has done. And so, philosophy in a Lefebvre point of view should be ready to overcome, realize, even more deny itself, not theoretically but in concreto. This denial is needed to be done through the practical energy punctuated by the radical critique in its relation with the practical will. This energy exactly is a transformed thought, more significantly is philosophy itself, which is transformed just through its wide openness on the contents and as well as below and beyond text. It's to say we have no only texts in philosophy, which is something very important for practical philosophy. We don't do philosophy only by text, through text, based on text, and without text we are unable to proceed. In fact, study between lived experience and disincarnated discourses, uh, philosophy of education also finds itself in an incessant and intensive recalcitrant and obstinate movement of attraction repulsion vis-a-vis -vis the possibility of congruence between theory and practice. We struggle we struggle between theory and practice always, and I struggle with this. On the one hand, philosophy, like what you said, can be conceived in two ways. One, in an Aristotelian perspective, as a form of university discourse in the frame of institutions, like is the usual thing, and second, as the utmost radical form of the discourse of the master, an affair of personal, of personal engagement where the fighting affirmation comes first. In that sense, philosophy is not anymore knowledge, but knowledge of the knowledge, that is to say, an action. Henceforth, in the defined element of philosophy, it's not the rules of a discourse, but the singularity of an act. On the other hand, philosophical act always, first, is in the form of a decision, of a separation, of a clear distinction between knowledge and opinion, correct and false opinions, truth and falsity. And secondly, it has a normative, normative dimension. In fact, if nothing in philosophy is irreversible, it's because philosophy is the act of reorganization of all experiences, theoretical as well as practical, through the proposition of a new, big normative division 
which reverses an established intellectual order and promotes new values beyond the common values. Following Lefebvre remarks, philosophy, God, uh, philosophy should deny the split between theory and practice and the egocentric way of reflection and become a theoretic practice by denying also in this way the split between the perceived, the conceived, and the experienced lived as a triplication which is not an abstract model but a real lived continuity which could acquire a singular coherence for a subject, helping it not to lose itself in confusion and dispersion. Even more, if education has a strong mechanism, mechanism of institutionalization, uh, seems to naturally work under the illusion of this coherence in a neo kantian or neo-Cartesian frame of thought, where the trinity, readability, visibility, intelligibility, leads the persons away from the practical social. For such an accomplishment of coherence, the fabric considers as important the possibility to accentuate the differences in two complementary movements. Firstly, by rejoining what abstractions tends to disjoin functions, elements, and moments of the social practice, leading in that way to restitution of the unity between the body, the needs, and the knowledge. Secondly, by discerning what abstractions tend to confound, creating thus a set of errors, even more if by this confusion the real person itself becomes abstract, non-real. From a Deridian point of view, a philosopher is always someone for whom philosophy is not a given, a token, someone who is essentially owed to wonder about the essence and the destination of philosophy and he reinvent it any, any time. This is a situation and a duty more peculiar than it seems from the first sight. It can lead to tremendous practical consequences. Firstly, because being philosophically sound means systematically remember that philosophy cannot but shake and refuse the established. And secondly, because being practically viable means that it cannot but elaborate a restitution or an establishment of meaning and usages. You cannot be a philosopher without establishing some kind of concept of theories. It's not, it's impossible. But in the same time, you must shake it down to, 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 to change always the common use of this concept. This truthful and contradictory way of acting explains for philosophy partly its violence and partly sensibility, but mainly its vulnerability. Philosophers, they don't like the word vulnerability for philosophy. But I think it's the time to, 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 to admit that there is vulnerability in philosophy. The act of thinking, its reflexive gestures, its way of creating and legitimating constraints, reveal its inner violence as it cuts reality in order to explain it, but in the same time, its inner therapeutical or restoring dynamics as its philosophy trying to restore interpretations, meanings, and usages. Philosophy remains vulnerable even more if, according to Lefebvre, philosophy has to go deep in the ordinary life in order to act on it. This whole description through refers, though, refers to a necessary but also fundamentally conflictual relation of philosophy to common sense as a main character of the ordinary. From the denial of the common sense to its restitution, there is always a tension which is almost significant for philosophy. In other terms, the real problem is the confrontation between the philosophical and the non-philosophical world, chiefly then the contradistinction between the thought, the most bodily, bodily aspect, abstract, consequently, consequently the most infinite and everyday life. If the depth of the philosophical analysis go to the roots, if its soil is the daily life, being everywhere, philosophy ought not only more or any more recognize itself as lying out of the ordinary or above it, but rather as acting in it and on it. According also to Lefebvre, the concept of rest, there is a concept in Lefebvre very, very interesting um, the, uh, from the aspect of practical philosophy. He speaks about a rest. Politically, there is something that it's out of the control always something which is in the, in the people, in the body, in the mind, which resists to homogenization or institutionalization. So it's like, this rests like beyond any system. 
philosophical, theoretical, scientific, technical, practical, political. It's a critical rest or a surplus, and an elaborator or an unescapable minimum, a fragment or side of meaning, which points to, re to the reciprocity merging between the repetitive and the becoming, is a exactly a residue not grasped by the systems which, which tend to ignore and neglect it, but which, from a critical point of view, turns to be something very instructive, precious, and finally something that has the most value. This rest, in the middle of the extreme complexity of the becoming, keeps away thinking and the necessity type of philosophy, which though cannot be but include fundamentally in its reason the act and the need of the act in. Lefebvre itself, he self say, not truth to reveal, no meuic, meu, meu, meuic, no recognition or renaissance. One act in theatrical sense. This act corresponds to a movement of the thinking which passes between the opposite two polar extremities, the one of the identity, the general, the homogeneous, and that of the non-identity, the singular, the exceptional. Into the Deleuzean critique of the terrifying models of pseudos, in which the powers of false unfold, like the new kind of thought, the thought interview, the thought conversation, the thought minute, the thought the journalism, represented by characters as, for example, the intellectual, the writer, and the journalist, it is the same thing. The possibility of the formation of a space of work made by off crossroad, crossings, interpretations, associations, tensions between the plural, the plural theoretical and practical in their connections multiply, where philosophy in a state of always mobility, discovering in difficulty its roots, sometimes acquiring the character of a serendipity, a character which falsifies through its normative experience pretensions could methodologically respond to such an emphasis to the practical aspect of philosophy. From a reasonable, pre methodical one, the less, to a methodical, exotical approach, which is of Michel Serre to that recently, three readings of methodological references as can be significant here. The Fugalian heterodopia, the Deleuzean rhizoma, and the exotical way of Michel Serre as proposed against the mainstream concept method. Additionally, the concept of that can be proposed as capable to encapsulate the pretension of congruence, firstly as an art craft for the complicated connection between theory and practice, but mainly as a tension between them, which installs the principle of connection primarily as a question. To the extent that it is about the basically vague, abstract, theoretical, practical quality, this of that, of contemplative, reflective, and emotional, physical texture, almost theoretical, which somehow summarizes in slide and often non-visible movements, orders of theory and practice, we assume that the field in which the function of that is developed can be determined as the field of thresholds, founding or deregulating duality, defining or unlocking contradiction. The threshold functions or no as a limit or as a mystery or as an unconcealment. It becomes a rhythm of spatio-temporal, ontological, logical structure. The tact works as a complicated thinking active way of dialectical understanding and handling of contradictions. Um, the tact is, is made by, uh, is, 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 is a pedagogical concept, in fact. Herbert was the, the founder, the, the, the person who spoke spoken about tact, uh, like the quality, as a quality of the educator to uh, conceal, to reconceal uh, theory and practice during his educational act. Uh, I was trying, I am trying to, 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 to state, to, to demonstrate that that could be a philosophical one, and that is not a pedagogical concept, but it could be a very significant concept in practical philosophy in order to regulate, to, to explain, to describe this tension between theory and practice. Bourdieu's observation that all attempts to establish a practice for obeying an explicitly framing rule, rule, whether in the field of art, of ethics, or politics, or medicine, or even sciences, collided with a question on, on the rules that determine the appropriate way of a moment. The time the time to implement rules, or as well express it, to put to practice a repertoire of recipes or techniques in a nutshell the art of execution, from where habitus is inevitably reintroduced, 
needs to be compromised by a strong movement of